So, here I am in the Gambia. I can't really say I'm in Banjul now because Banjul is east of here. But what I'm doing now is I'm going to go visit the war cemetery to find. So, it's in walking distance from where I'm staying, which is quite a good thing. You know, save some money. But, you know, see where I am? I mean, these are like dirt roads. Paved. <laughs> then footpath, TIA, this is Africa. That's a really nice mosque over there. Handmade. How lovely. Well, I'm getting really close to the cemetery and I'm quite glad that I've done it without having to pay for a taxi. You know, in countries in the, you know, poor parts of the world, everybody will insist you take a taxi. Not in my world. I'm kind of hoping I can get like a shared van, the van jewel, later today. I really want to take that ferry, you know, the ferry across the Sahara. Uh, uh, uh. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I finally made it. This is Fajara War Cemetery. The cemetery was built and is maintained by the Commonwealth War Graves Commission. Oh yes, and this explains the Gambia in two world wars. It's kind of funny that there are Commonwealth War Graves here in Gambia because the Gambia literally didn't really have much war happening in both world wars. But you gotta remember, like a lot of people from the Gambia and British West African nations actually fought in Burma. Would you believe it? Yeah. The United Royal West African Frontier Forces served in the brief operations in August 1914, which led to the surrender of German forces in Togo land. He wanted to campaign to occupy German Cameroons and the substantial garrison of both territories. So, oh yeah, and it says two West African bridges took part in a successful campaign in Italian East Africa and two divisions in the victory in Burma. Yes, so that's Burma. The feats and arms remembered who the forces of other Commonwealth countries whose side they fought were all volunteers and many came from the Gambia. The cemetery contains 203 burials of the Second World War by forces they comprised of 120 West African, 63 British, 10 Canadian, 2 Australian, 2 New Zealand, 1 Rhodesian, 2 French, and a Norwegian. So I, I'd known really well that there was a Norwegian buried here and all. So, what I'm going to do now. The soldiers and airmen whose memory is honoured here died in the service of the country and lie buried elsewhere in West Africa. Of the Gambian Regiment. And look how African those names are because, you see, in East Africa, a lot of people from Kenya were actually buried in mass graves and were not given proper burials. This is what my MP David Lammy had stressed a lot, that they were really unremembered. So, as you can see here, this is Royal West African Force, Fokumu Muke African Pioneer Corps, so he died 1942. So most of these people buried here died in like 1942, because Banjul must have been a military base, and you know, planes you know, flying, you know, from Gambia to Britain, you know, there were a lot of air accidents. So, these men are all from West African forces. Look at the same, Jacob. Alpheus Jacob. And I like how they explain the full name, they just don't say first initial and then surname. Now these are all British troops and all. Well we have a Canadian buried right here, J.R. Rosen. No, no, 
goes on. Wireless operator air gunner died 16 September 1942, age 29. There are two New Zealanders right here, which are quite symbolic to me because my great uncle fought in Egypt and Libya. And one of my best friends, who's South African, uh, her grandfather also fought in Egypt and Libya, which is quite really symbolic. We have more British airmen here. Oh, uh, look, look, look at that surname, like B H A Puke, pilot. That's very African, African serving under the Royal Air Force. Another Canadian here. Oh yes, and we have a Jewish Canadian buried right here. See, war did not discriminate against religion. You know, matter of fact, you see, those people buried there are Muslim, so their headstones are facing Mecca. Traditionally, so we got more British servicemen buried here as well. Hey, right, worst signals! I've seen this many times as well. Royal Army Medical Corps. Hmm. Ah, Royal Army Pay Corps. Hmm. It says right here, believed to be buried in the cemetery is John Badio, West African Electrical and Merchant Engineers. 31st of May, 1944. Uh, War Royal Artillery. Oh, the Rhodesian Regiment. I have not seen a Rhodesian grave since I was in Singapore. This is quite, you know, symbolic, you know, because I kind of think, how did he go from Rhodesia and dying in the Gambia? See, a lot of Africans, they traveled a lot, lot through the continent to fight all of them in World War II. So if I haven't seen any Australians buried here yet, um, <laughs> look, Kanye Agondia. <laughs> I never knew Kanye was such an African surname. And here, this is for one of my Norwegian friends. Uh, her Hilve Norsk German Jacobson. Yes, uh, so he was 33 when he died. I have not seen a Norwegian war grave since I was in Dunkirk many years ago. Uh, more British servicemen buried here. And airmen of the war. Flying boat carry. Uh, flying boat Claire, 27, 1942. Airmen of the war, flying boat known unto God. H. We've got British Navy here, British Navy. Oh, and look, we have a French. You know, you see, for, when French get buried in different countries, they have a simple cross with a name. Nabilot Marcel, Lieutenant Colonel, died 1942. Lancashire, Fulsters, Artillery, Airmen. So, uh, these men are from the, the Gambian Regiment. Oh, 1952, that was before. Gambia became independent, so this is like after World War II, 1951, 
Now we've got more West African forces buried here. Oh, look, the Gold Coast Regiment, that, that's, that's Ghana. See, Ghana was known as the Gold Coast before its independence. Well, West African Artillery, African Pioneer Corps, John M. Payne, West African Artillery, it's December 1942. Another British Navy, West African Regiment, Gold Coast Regiment. <sighs> oh, and look, the Nigerian Regiment, 242. See, you know, like British West Africa, you know, included Nigeria. The Gold Coast, which became known as Ghana, Gambia, and Sierra Leone. Yeah, yeah. Kofi Bonzi, yeah. Yeah, her reminds of Kofi Annan from Ghana, who was the you know UN Secretary General for many years. And more African Pioneer Corps, the Gold Coast Regiment. Oh, Dominique Dadson, mm. Dana Dargetti, Philip Kindy, no, how do I say, Philip Nikide, France. And then, look, uh, John Sylvia who served as the RAF, West African Air Corps, a soldier of World War One, no sorry, World War Two, known to God. And then, now we have the graves of uh, those Muslims who died in World War Two. And also World War One, and they, as I said, their headstones face Mecca traditionally. Now these are all West African forces. Oh look, the Gambia Naval Volunteer Force, West African Army Service, the Gambia Regiment. Oh, and uh, another Frenchman. It's weird, he's buried here, but, uh, I was trying to think, maybe he was from Senegal, or maybe he was from Guinea, uh, hard to tell, M. Bain, but yeah, that's definitely an African name. See, I always love how, no matter what faith, you know, you, you believed in, in death, you always remember it, by the faith you follow. Whether you're Christian, Muslim, Jew, Buddhist, Hindu, or even agnostic or atheist. Yes. So, that's me. Um, oh yes, and the, the cross of remembrance over there. So it was Remembrance Day a couple of days ago, so I believe the British High Commissioners left the reef there.